Hey guys, Jerry here again with another YouTube video. Today we're going to be talking about the five most common mistakes that new players make on Azure Lane. So in my opinion, the hardest part of Azure Lane is when you first start playing. Um, you have like no ships, you can't do commissions, you have no gear, you have no skills leveled up. Um, so there's these five mistakes that I think that a lot of players make and I think are the most common mistakes. And I'm going to tell you why I think these are mistakes and what you should be doing instead in order to help your progression. Number one is not doing your PVPs because you're scared to lose. Now when you first start up, you're obviously not going to have a lot of ships higher level. Your fleet power is going to be maybe like three or four thousand and then you're going to be jumping into PVP and then you're going to see 14 13 thousands across the board and you're like no i don't want to lose i'm just gonna leave it as is and i'm just gonna you know not do pvp but you should be doing pvp now there's two reasons why um you still get half the amount of experience um even when you lose that you would get and on top of that you don't lose any oil you don't lose any morale when your sheet when your uh ships sink so it's totally worth doing because you it, it's free it costs nothing and you're still getting stuff in return you're getting experience and you're getting merit um and that's reason number two is you need to start building up merit because merit allows you to buy gold bullions so here's a gold bullion right here 15k merits for a gold bullion i'm actually going to buy this cube right now it, you can buy bullions, you can buy gold cubes, you can also, there's Eldridge in South Dakota in the shop, but in my opinion, um, the Merit Shop is a really important source of gold bullions in the early game because there's not a whole lot of sources early on and you're leveling up your ships and you're trying to limit break them. So you have Merit Shop to give you um, more gold bullions. So PvP is important for that reason because you need you need the experience in order to level up your ships, you need the Merit to just start buying gold bullions and cubes, and on top of that, it doesn't cost anything. Um, even if you lose, you still get half the experience and merit that you would get even if you had won. So just pick the hardest dude that'll give you the most experience and divide that by two and that's what you're going to get. So don't be scared to lose in PvP. The second most common mistake that I see new players making is opening pink and blue boxes. They see, oh man, new gear. They all try and open up the box and all they get is a bunch of grays and blues and it's not going to be it's not going to be good gear. Don't bother opening these. What you should be doing is take clicking on them, hitting this craft button and crafting them up to blue. So here I made a couple of blues and now you can take your blues, hit craft again, and you can actually make purples. And then we, you open up the purple tech boxes because purples, purple tech boxes can give you purple gear and blue gear. Purple gear um, is a lot better. There's some best in slot gear that is purple. So you want to be able to try and get those uh, gear toolboxes, triple 406 millimeter for a battleship, twin 410 millimeter for battleship, uh, TBTSK gun for light cruisers. All of these guns are purple, best in slot, and you want to maximize your chances of getting them. So you want to craft up all the way to purple. I have a few laying around here, but don't open up your pink and blue boxes. Uh, you want to craft them up to purple and then open up your purples. Don't be impatient. Gear will come. Um, don't open up the blue and pink simply because you're not going to get any good gear at all maybe a fire extinguisher there's very little blue gear that's good and as absolutely no good gear that's gray so craft them up and then open up your purples the third most common mistake i see new players make is using limit break zero ships um i hate it i really don't like it when people suggest using limit break zero ships for farming lower level maps especially for early on on newer players you're going to be not getting any experience you're going to be losing out on all the experience it slows down your progression immensely because that experience could have been go going to actually useful ships that will be actually useful later on as you progress in later worlds so you're losing out on that experience you're slowing down the progression of your ships you're you limit yourself on what maps you can do um obviously limit break zero ships can only do up to like world seven world eight at best world seven probably um, it's just not worth it you're going to be limiting on your maps you're not going to be able to farm anything up for the sake of oil efficiency um, higher maps and even in events have purple plates and you usually can't do limit break zero on those so you're going to be limiting yourself to like lower level event maps so you can limit break zero but you're not getting any purple plates you're losing out on experience you're losing out on your ship progression don't worry about oil efficiency so much for whatever reason a lot of players like to super impose this on your players it really doesn't matter don't worry about oil efficiency so much don't be using limit break zero ships just for the sake of saving oil it's not worth it you're going to be slowing yourself down way too much your rewards are going to be worse you're not going to be able to do the higher level maps if you want to save on oil just trim down the fleet that you're using to save that oil um, if you're using limit broken ships um, and you know it's getting expensive when you limit break them the oil cost goes up and it's getting expensive just trim them down instead of running a 3-3 fleet maybe trim down to 2-2 two, two or something like that don't but never never ever use limit break zero ships because you're just losing out on way too much. And I, I, I hate it when people on Reddit 
suggest this on your players when people ask like what's the best way to farm the event map and some guys are like oh just use limit break zero casting and downs with Erebus and uh farm t3 or whatever of the hollow live event don't do that you're losing out on purple plates you're losing out on experience you're losing out on progression don't use limit break zero ships i've i have limit break zero ships i have the Erebus. i have a casting and downs i don't think i've ever used them uh, honestly like i got them to level 70 i'm like oh just leave them around casting and downs maybe i used early on when i was just like farming just to be able to uh because casting and downs only cost one oil each being able to use them on your fleet in order to increase the number of ships you use in order to increase the amount of commander experience that you get is useful at a cost of only one oil it, it really i mean it's really kind of worth it but early early on you should be leveling up ships you're going to be using anyway so don't worry about that until later on don't use limit break zero ships especially especially as a newer player Another mistake that I see newer players make is limit breaking before level 70. Now, this is a bit of a controversial topic, but in my opinion, limit breaking before level 70 doesn't really make that much of a difference. If you're struggling on a map, limit breaking a ship or two isn't going to make a significant difference in your performance. The only exception to that rule is battleships and battle cruisers with a main gun mount plus one on their first limit break this literally doubles their damage because they shoot two salvos instead of one and you're able to obviously you're able to do more damage but late uh, generally that's not the case this is for example here on like he's ai a main gun base plus one on my next limit break which is a first one from 70 to 80 this is worth doing because it literally allows kizune AI, instead of shooting one once to shoot twice every time she shoots it it's basically doubles her damage so limit breaking for the first limit break for battle cruisers and battleships is probably the only time i would say recommend limit breaking before level 70. otherwise you're not really getting anything out of your boolins your gold and your oil right off the bat early on before level 70. a lot of the time people say well it's only two oil per limit break and you know and it does and it helps you a lot. It honestly doesn't really help you that much. Let's take a look at what I see on Kazuna AI. Obviously, the main, most important part for her right now is the main gun base plus one. But I also get 300 health, 20 firepower, which is maybe a 10% it's a increase in firepower, 10% uh, increase in torp, 10% increase in AA. That's not really going to make or break me not being able to clear a level that I'm struggling with, right? It's not worth it don't use a ship i mean yeah it says only two limit break per limit break if you're limit breaking all of your ships early on two limit two oil per ship times six is 12 oil multiply that by 100 sorties and you could have saved 1200 oil and honestly your performance difference is not going to be that significant don't limit break before level 70 save up your oil i know i just literally talked about don't worry about being so oil efficient but in this case not only is it oil efficient it costs coins it costs boolins and you're not getting really anything significant out of it again save your stuff for when you do need it don't limit break stuff until you reach level 70 with the exception of battle cruisers and battleships with main gun main gun base plus one first levels are king in this game if you're having issues with levels early on and you you know you don't think it was like oh man if i just limit break my ship I'll, my, my frontliner i'll be able to to clear the the level probably not the case levels are king go back farm up a bit get your levels up then go forward again to this level that you were struggling with and try it again and you'll probably just smash through it once your ships are leveled up a bit more levels are more important than limit break don't limit break before level 70. The last mistake that I see newer players make a lot is not leveling up a variety of ships. Now, this is generally dependent on the availability of the ships. It's a lot easier to get carriers early on than good battleships and battle cruisers. So you're going to see a lot of newer players running a triple carrier backline. That's not good. You're opening up yourself to suicide bullets. But on top of that, you're not going to be able to meet event requirements and hard mode requirements when you try to do hard mode and event stages you need a variety of ships leveled up in order to enter a lot of maps you need battle crews you need battleships you need carriers you need light cruisers you need heavy cruisers you need destroyers now obviously that's hard as a new player because you don't have a lot of ships you're struggling to be able to put any fleet together never mind being able to level up a variety of ships and that's okay early on it's it's harder but as you progress don't forget to level up 
a variety of ships you know if you got your stuff to maybe you got a few ships to level 100 maybe it's time to go back and be like mm, maybe i don't know have a whole lot of battleships maybe i'll level another one up or like mm, my front line i have like really destroyer heavy maybe i'll level up a light cruiser or a heavy cruiser something like that portland's a very good heavy cruiser early on phoenix helena cleveland very good light cruisers your starter is a great uh, destroyer carriers um you have enterprise as a freebie now illustrious is really good battleships is a bit harder you got rodney nelson early on everybody else is mostly event limited right now the event saruga is really good uh, fairly good battleships so you're able to level her up uh just keep that in mind as you level as you're leveling ships up and you're picking ships to level make sure to level up a variety of ships so you're not locked out of hard mode stages and event mode stages because you don't have the requirements to be able to even enter the stage so make sure you have a healthy spread of ship types in your fleet so that was the top five mistakes that i think new players make um if you guys think i missed anything or that you want to, something to add make sure to leave it in the comment section below once again check out my twitch stream uh at twitch.tv slash jerto one i stream two to three times a week streaming azure lane um i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know if you have any comments or any questions don't hesitate to leave them down below hit the subscribe button as well and thank you very much for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one take care peace